The other side of the coin is, of course, UK citizens going into the EU. Um, I've got a lot of clients who have got a second home or a holiday home in Spain or, or Malta or Portugal, and they're, they're concerned about how can I access my home, uh, you know, a holiday home or my second home on a regular basis. Perhaps not so much of an issue now because of the current climate and circumstances, but very soon this will be something that people will start thinking about. How often can I go out to Spain? And again, assuming that you're a UK citizen who wasn't resident in an EU member country before 11 p.m. on, uh, on the 31st of December, um, you'll only be allowed to visit the EU for 90 days out of any 180 day period. Now, what many people haven't actually picked up on the distinction is that 90 days applies to the whole of the EU. So you can't go to France for 90 days and then pop over to Spain and then expect that to restart your clock. For two reasons, your 90 days covers the whole of the EU, but also you're still then going over your 90 days in a 180 day period. There are some exceptions to this. Um, so Bulgaria, Croatia, Cyprus and Romania have got different um, uh, uh, requirements so that you can stay there longer. So perhaps we might start to see UK citizens looking at purchasing property in those. In the, maybe those will be the retirement destinations of choice for, for the British. Um, and then that could lead to interesting tax situations with, with um, those countries. So that's something to just keep on your radar as well. Um, but also uh, just a final comment, and then I think we can maybe sort of talk uh, a little bit more generally within the panel and get, take questions. But a lot of British citizens also think that if they apply for permanent residence in a country such as Spain or Portugal, permanent residence would allow them to then travel throughout the EU uh, without having to worry about the 90 day requirement. And unfortunately, that's not the case. Permanent residence will only apply to the country you you, you, you have it for. So if you have permanent residence in Portugal, um, then you will only be able to stay there indefinitely in Portugal, but the rest of the EU will be subject to a 90 day um, residence. Th that's quite important. I actually had a client contact me and she'd already invested 800,000 euros into Portugal to get permanent residence, got permanent residence, and then realized that it didn't do anything for her in terms of accessing her holiday home in France. So that was a very expensive mistake to make um, when it comes to assumptions on, on how you will be treated. We've talked about the remittance basis. Well, that starts off fine. But after a couple of years, you slowly get drawn more and more into the UK tax net. So the first couple of years, you can just claim the remittance basis. After a couple of years, you need to start taking more steps to, to claim it. And then after seven years or further down the line, you start hitting tax charges. So as Roy was talking about, um, you know, some jurisdictions are 100,000 euro per uh, annum tax charge. Similarly, within the UK, after you've been in the UK for seven out of the previous nine years, you'll start having to pay £30,000 a year to claim the remittance basis. And then after 12 years, it'll go up to 60000 So you're going to be balancing how much overseas um, income and gains you're generating versus whether it is worth paying that charge. And if, you're get, if that's being generated in a high tax jurisdiction, you might find that the tax being paid overseas mops up any English charge or any UK charge you would have been paying. So it's not worth um, paying the remittance basis, but for others, it may well be so. Spain was the first to introduce this in 2003, uh, called the Beckham Law. Why was it called the Beckham Law? Well, David Beckham wanted a sign for Real Madrid. Real Madrid wanted him. Uh, David didn't want to pay tax on his 160 million pounds income from uh, Adidas. And uh, so I don't know how this happened, but somebody at Real Madrid knew whoever it was who was leading the government. I have a feeling that somebody at Real Madrid may have even been in the government. Uh, and they changed the rule uh, and they brought in the impatriate regime, which is now called the Beckham rule. Uh, it requires employment, a genuine employment. 
um, and uh, the person who comes into employment could be a director of the company, but he cannot own more than 24%, uh, more than 25% of the company. Uh, and he's taxed on his Spanish source income, on his Spanish source employment income, but he's not taxed on his foreign income, nor gains for a period of six years. And that was, of course, very appealing for a lot of sports personalities. Uh, basically, in Spain, you've got Barcelona and Real Madrid as the two main clubs, um, and they have benefited enormously from uh, being able to attract sports personalities to these clubs. Uh, Spain did change the rules in 2015 and now uh, no longer able to bring in sports personalities, but entrepreneurs can and do regularly go to Spain and receive their uh, foreign income and gains without tax. And then other countries started thinking, well, you know, we could do the same sort of thing. So Portugal brought in its non-habitual resident regime. Uh, and that doesn't require employment. So a lot of people have gone to Portugal uh, with pension income, for example, and able to receive the income um, without Portuguese tax. 